Hello, this is Mike with Trayvon's RV Center, here to congratulate you on your 2024 J-Flight 334 RTS travel trailer. Take the beautiful unit here, I'm going to walk you around and show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite and a couple things to take into consideration when we're parking. On your campsite, I want you to leave plenty of room for that slide as well as your big awning. On your off campsite, a couple of slides to leave room for. But I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. They're actually going to be in between the slides. So power just in front of your tires on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. And then water about midway in between tires in front of the unit. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once we arrive and unhook our hitch, first thing we do is level our unit. The unit does come with a power tongue jack. Night docking light should we arrive at night. Simply retract to lower. Extend to raise. Get your unit level. Should you lose power, um, this little hand crank right here, we'll get on that and get this up and down without power. But uh, speaking of power, every now and then check your battery post, make sure nothing's wiggled loose over time. Once we got our unit level, next thing we're going to do is stabilize it. The same hand crank or a drill gun or impact driver. Bring, bring these new style lippers down. So you want to make sure they've got this little safety chain here. Undo that chain and lift up on this. And these will literally push right down to the ground. And then a couple cranks to lock it down there. That's it. Just that quick you can get these down. Now I am going to recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads will protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris. Keep them from sinking into hot blacktop at some of these parks. So get a four pack of them, run them down. Put all four of these down. We've got our unit level, stable. We can hook up our power and water. You got a big, long 50 amp cord. Plugs in here on the side. Now, the way these work now is they'll go in at about 11 o'clock, turn it to the right, and then put your black washer on. Should you need a 50 to 30 amp dog bone, comes your convenience pack as well as a 30 to 15 application you need to plug into a 110. Got your power hooked up, let's soak up your water. At campsites, we'll hook up two city water connections. First and foremost, a water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines of your unit. You don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites, so always use these. Come to city water, hook that up, hook up your hose, Go ahead and turn that hose on. Now after a few minutes, go inside. Open up your slides if you have to, but I need you to get in there and get to all of your water lines. Open up your uh, sinks, your showers. Get all the water lines running. Get the air out of the lines. Get a nice steady flow of water going through them. Shut them off and you're all set. All right, let's say we're not going to go to a campsite. We're going to go dry camping. In that case, right next to it is your potable water. No need for a water pressure regulator here. You can just gravity fill this with a hose. Uh, way to tell this is full is go on the inside, watch your tank to be filled up, fresh water tank. Once that's full, remove that hose, put that cap back on, and then whenever you want that water, you'll turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when your city water is hooked up. That's already pressurized, it won't pull nothing. So, we're all set to camp now. We got power, we got water. Let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit, continuing here on the off camp side with our pass through storage here. Again, stabilizing jacks. There's a handle down there for your gray water holding tank. More storage here. Come around, I'm going to talk about your slide seals. Um, you want these to stay flexible and pliable over the years. There are sprays that you can buy for those. Our tank flush, we'll talk about that when we dump our black and gray tanks. Fre fre uh, fresh water tank, city water connection, hot and cold shower. There's our other gray tank, black holding tank, low point drains. Here's your hot water heater. Just uh, one thing when you do fill up these, you want to make sure you keep that closed. Down here is a flu for your furnace, a few things on that. Uh, one, make sure you keep it clear, and two, when you are running it, steer clear, it does get hot. 
Got a vent for a hood range indoors. Or another low point drain. Here you can plug in the cable at the cap sites. More storage back here. Another stabilizing jack. You got a ladder, utilize it. Go up there two, three times a year. Check the seams of your roof and caulk as needed with recommended RV roofing caulk. Get a cover for your spare tire. Keep that from getting dry rotted in the sun. You are prepped for a backup camera up there. Coming over here on our campsite. Not much to talk about until we get up by the doorway here. You are prepped for a TV. I'll show you the clamp in there to snap onto your TV. The TV will clamp on here. Here's your 110 and your cable. Couple outdoor speakers. Your awnings do have a pitch adjust. If it's raining, you want to tilt this way, pull down on this, and that will tilt your awning this way. Um, awnings are for shade. Light rain, heavy rain, high winds, bring them in. Here's your um, pitch work. Back there is the snap-on TV bracket I talked about. We do have lighting in here as well. Up front, your propane does have a cover. It's on a regulator. Simply point it toward the tank you wish to be using. I believe that about covers everything out here. We'll take a look at the inside. Coming up inside the unit. First thing I like to point out is your fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone is camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway in case of emergency. Coming in over here to the left is going to be a lot of my control panel, our lighting, indoor and out. Over here is where we can check our battery, the fresh tank. That's the one I said to hold down when you're filling up your potable water. Black and gray tanks. Your second gray tank is going to be for your uh, sinks and showers. Gray tank number one is going to be for where you prep for your washer and dryer. I'll show you that outside. Here's where you turn on your water pump to get to that fresh water. Slide in awning controls on your awning. You only want to run that awning out until you can see that bar. If you continue to hold that extend out, it will extend itself out beyond that. Flip up onto yourself and start rolling itself up backwards. So keep an eye on it when you run it out. Make sure you don't run it out further than you need to. So again, next to those are slide controls. We'll utilize those when we get ready to close the unit up. Coming up in here, down here, we have our breaker box and fuses. A ton of 15s and a handful of 25s. Highly recommend having some of those with you when you go camping. Charging ports of 110. Self-explanatory microwave. Light fan. Glass top. Just flip that back. Makes a nice backsplash. Turn on your panel light. Turn that to gas. Get your spark. And that's how quick them light up. Same thing on your oven. Open this up. Turn that to light, hit your spark. If you get at the right angle, you might even be able to see the flame. But if not, turn on this panel light down here and comes an oven light. Make sure your pilot light lit up before turning this to your desired temperature. Make sure this is down for traveling. Very on fridge, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, simple controls in there. TV, fireplace, sound system. I'll start with the sound system. I got it on Bluetooth, so let's get to FM. See if we can get a channel to come in. There we go. So zone one is indoors. You can hear it, zone two is outdoors. Really nice AM, FM, Bluetooth, auxiliary, compatible sound system. Touch it once to mute it, hold it in to shut it off. Went back all the way up for your TV because that's where your remote's at. So you got an insignia, smart TV. Just when you arrive at the campsites, go into your home, go to your menu, go to your digital channel scan, and scan for your local channels. Remote's over there. Fireplace. Oh, that was our IRV sound system fireplace. Not just for looks anymore. I can make, show you the pretty colors, but the biggest thing is the heat. Um, instead of 66, I already feel the heat coming off this. So if you're at a campsite, 
plugged in, running off electricity, just chilly in here in the morning or evening, don't waste your gas. Turn this on here and it'll get it toasty in here in no time. Use up, use their electricity instead of your gas. I'm gonna show you real quickly how to turn your sofa into a bed. Velcro bags, pull them off. Lift your front up, hold your legs out, going towards you. Put your back down. And just that quickly, you've got a sofa. Now we're turning everything. Make sure you lift your back up first. Otherwise you'll damage this when you fold these in. Just fold your legs in. Put this down. Return your cushions. Recliners. These are removable, they're just sitting in your cup holder. Parachute pull is what I call them. Pull on that, put your feet up. Now putting them back, you do have to use your own legs to push them back down. And make sure if you have these on here, you put it in there before you slide this slide close. Down on your island is gonna be your 12 volt carbon dioxide propane detector. The reason I mentioned that's 12 volts, that's always running off your battery. So if you are out dry camping, um, Think about that when you're out there because this will always be running off your battery. Smoke alarm up in the ceiling down there. AC with quick dump, which brings me to our thermostat. We'll go ahead and crank up the AC. Which again has a quick dump. Close that and it'll blast it through the regulars. Good, but open this up and blast some nice cool air down in here. Now, notice when I go to off on this, generally the AC shuts off rather quickly. Now your furnace, go through to Furnace, turn it up to 90, get that to kick on. Make sure we turn that right there. Now you'll notice when I shut that off, it actually will take a couple minutes for that to cycle through before it shuts off. Right in our bathroom, also a hand crank exhaust up here. 110 with GFCI reset. And here's where you'll turn on your hot water heater. You'll learn your, couple, your uh, comfortable temperature over time, just as you do your hot water heater at home. These glass doors for your shower, make sure you snap them closed for traveling. Plumbing, kitchen and bathroom, um, maintain it. Those are square head screws at your accident panel. Get up underneath there, especially if you travel a lot in this, get up underneath there, look at your lines, make sure nothing's wiggled loose over time. Living in here, I want to bring in here and show you where your big closet is. Let's wash your dryer preps in here. And wash your dryer prep in here. These will come out and set your washer and dryer in there. Solar controller panel. Whole purpose of this is to keep your uh, solar panels from overcharging your batteries. Your whole purpose. Only thing you have to worry about is to keep this out flooded, which is the type of battery you have. Um, I'll send you a separate video from Go Power on this. Simple system, really nice. Nothing for you to really have to worry about. We've got a uh, prep for a TV back here as well. And that about covers everything. I do want to make sure you have this door also. That one, but this bathroom door snapped open so that doesn't bounce around traveling. We check these and close this, which means we've about covered everything inside here. Uh, we do have some storage underneath here. This is accessible outdoors, which makes me think to remind you to make sure all of your exterior um, storage areas are 
locked whenever you're leaving. All right, in the bedroom here, I'd say most of our lighting is going to be one touch. We're going to act like we're leaving the campsite. Close the unit up. Here and here as well. Let me sure everything's out of the way of this slide. We're just going to hit in and bring in this bedroom slide. Again, making sure our closet doors are secure. Don't you hear that noise? That is just the slide mechanism telling you that it's in all the way. Now I say doors and drawers. Walk through the unit, make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's going to impede our slide from coming in. Once you check doors and drawers, we're going to shut off my lights up here. Then that shows me any other lights that are on are accent lights that I need to walk through and shut off before we travel. Once all these accent lights are off, we can come back over to our control panel, turn, turn your lights back on, and bring in our off campsite. Again, we've walked through and made sure all doors and drawers are closed, especially these over here. Once that slides in, we hit our campsite slide. See, we wouldn't have been able to get to any of those accent lights with these slides in. So we shut them off first. Shut off our interior lights, exit the unit. Now the biggest thing on these steps, whether bringing them up or down, is to make sure your exterior door is all the way open, otherwise this will catch on it. Your feet are adjustable. Remove cotter pin, move it where you want it. Set this up inside, that'll lock that in there. Now before you leave the dump station, lock, deadbolt, lift and turn this handle. That's how you want that for traveling. I say before you leave the dump station, because you're going to want to get in there and watch the levels of your tanks as you're dumping them. Now, if we are dry camping, we're going to unhook our pop or bring up our stabilizing jacks. Come over here to our low point drain. Get up underneath here and dump those. And then our freshwater tank back here. Open that up and head on home to the nearest dump station whenever we're in need of. If we're to campsite, we're going to unhook our power, our water, our cable, bring up our stabilizing jacks. Okay, see how these come up a lot easier too. Just lift up on this. Give this a little turn just to loosen this. To the left, lift up on this and it'll come right up. A couple more cranks. Snap in our safety chain. And head on up to the dump station. Now remember, at the dump station, park accordingly. Your dump is going to be in front of your tires on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. That 10 foot hose comes with your convenience pack. Hook that up and pull your black holding tank. When it sounds like it's no longer draining, check inside. Make sure the black is empty or close to it. If it is, come back out. Leave that black handle open. Grab the hose at the dump station and come up to this tank flush valve. Again, emphasizing leaving that black handle open. Turn on that hose and let that run for a good five minutes. I'm going to wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. When that's done, remove that hose. Put that cap back on. And make sure all that water you put in there has drained out. 
and then you can close your black. And then we're going to pull our gray wire here. It's going to be cleaner wires, your sinks, your showers. Again, if you do hook up the uh, the washer and dryer, then that will be your front one here. When your last gray is done, take your sewage hose and conveniently and sanitarily store it right here in your bumper and head on home. Yeah, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this J-Flight for many years to come. Happy camping.